so Cheng uh, got his master's degree uh, in Beijing at uh, Peking University. He then uh, went to Ohio State to do his PhD with uh, David Weinberg and worked on, worked on the Halo model galaxy clusters, etc. And since then, he has been a uh, postdoc at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton. Uh, Cheng is going to be with us for three days. Uh, so Cheng has worked mostly on galaxy clustering. He has also looked at uh, several aspects of uh, 21 centimeter emission, Lyman alpha emission, and uh, weak lensing and micro lensing. Uh, so today he's going to tell us what we can learn about galaxy evolution from cluster. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. So uh, it's really a pleasure to, to be here to give a talk here. And so I will talk about uh, what can we learn about galaxy uh, evolution from galaxy clustering. So I will pre present some work uh, I did with uh, many collaborators, and here is a list of collaborators. So uh, galaxy evolution is really a, a complicated process. So you may think um, many aspects of the galaxy evolution. For example, uh, the stars in the galaxy, you know, old stars uh, may age, and the new stars may fall, and the galaxy may merge with each other. And the color or luminosity of galaxy, or even the morphology of galaxy, can change over the life of uh, uh, the life of the galaxies, and uh, and the different uh, processes can kick in, in at the different stages of galaxy evolution. For example, the the stellar uh, fit, the, the star formation feedback or the aging feedback can play you know, uh, quite a, a different roles at the different stages of galaxy evolution. So, in my talk, I just try to want to uh, show what what uh, we can learn and how we can learn about the ga uh, galaxy evolution uh, from uh, galaxy clustering. So for, uh, for that purpose, I, I need to model the galaxy clustering. So uh, the tool I use uh, is, a, is a framework of the halo occupation distribution. So, so for that purpose, I will first uh, uh, give an introduction of the halo occupation distribution. And in, uh, in short, I call it HOD. And then we, uh, as examples, I will, I will present uh, HOD modeling result of this Deep 2 and the Sloan galaxy clustering, and basically this galaxy population at redshift 1 and the galaxy population at redshift 0. And also uh, talking about the uh, modeling result for the NOL Deep Wide Field Survey galaxies. So I try to understand something, you know, uh, something about the galaxy evolution since redshift 1. And uh, uh, then I summarize my talk and uh, uh, point out some future uh, directions. Okay, so uh, with the current uh, contemporary galaxy redshift service, we have a really good uh, you know, idea about the distribution of galaxy in our universe. Uh, for, uh, as a local universe, for example, from the 2DF or Sloan galaxy, we know uh, galaxy clustering, you know, how galaxy distributed in the universe as a function of galaxy properties, such as the luminosity, the color, and uh, the type of galaxies. And also, uh, much effort has been put uh, to study galaxy uh, clustering at a higher redshift. And uh, for example, we have surveys uh, up to redshift one, like uh, uh, VVDS, Combo 17, Deep 2, things like this. And at a higher redshift, we have like Lyman Bridge Galaxy surveys. So that's, uh, that's what we observe. Basically, we observe the bright side of the universe. We observe light. Uh, however, in theory, you know, what we know but all, what we, we know the most uh, is the, the dark side of the uh, universe. So for a given cosmo cosmological model, you know, which we know pretty much uh, about it you know, at present, so we basically know like, uh, uh, everything about the evolution and the formation of the, the structure of dark matter. And uh, so, so there is a, a natural unit for this kind of uh, dark matter uh, clustering. That's uh, the, the dark matter halo. So which is defined as a, a roughly spherical object uh, uh, with over density about the 200 of the mean density of the universe. Uh, so it's roughly in visual, uh, visual uh, equilibrium. So, so given the cosmological model, we, we know almost uh, like uh, everything about the uh, dark matter halos. We know how they, uh, uh, we know the abundance of them as a function of their, their mass. Uh, we know how they cluster in space. And uh, we know how they move in, in, uh, in the universe. So the question is, you know, uh, given the galaxy clustering given the, uh, that we observe, and given the uh, dark matter halo you know, uh, clustering, dark matter halo uh, uh, clustering that we know in theory, you know, 
how can we you know, connect these two and how can we understand you know, galaxy clustering and what kind of information we can get from ga galaxy, galaxy clustering and, uh, and the known theory about uh, uh, dark matter uh, uh, from uh, evolution. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, so this kind of halos, you know, here uh, talking about halos is depend on the mass of the halo uh, the halo can host uh, one single galaxy, it can host uh, two, a pair of galaxies, or a group of galaxies, or a cluster of galaxies. So, so, so halo mass is here uh, a k a parameter uh, uh, here. So uh, to connect these two, uh, basically what what we uh, we uh, the framework we work in is the halo occupation distribution. So it just tells how galaxies occupy dark matter halos. So it basically has three aspects: this P and M. Basically, the probability distribution of finding n galaxies of a certain type, you can define any type of galaxies you, you like, uh, in a halo of video mass m. So you know, we have like uh, the mean occupation of galaxy as a function of halo mass and the uh, other higher uh, moments of this. And uh, the second aspect of this halo occupation distribution is the uh, spatial bias within halos. That's uh, how galaxy uh, are distributed spatially inside the halos with, the res with the respect to the uh, dark matter di distribution. Uh, the other aspect of the halo occupation distribution is the velocity bias within halos. It does the how galaxy move inside the halo, in, inside the halos with, with respect to the dark matter. So this halo occupation distribution, in fact, uh, has been applied to, to model, to model uh, galaxy clustering uh, very early on. And also, there are some related frameworks, such as the conditional luminosity function uh, uh, introduced by Yang Mo and Van Borchert. So all these things are just try to establish, you know, a framework to describe the relation between galaxy and dark matter halos. So uh, the thing that okay, so we we basically know all these dark matter <coughs> halo population. You know, we know everything about them, and then we we observe gal galaxy clustering. Then we try to you know infer based on this known properties of dark matter, uh, dark matter halo uh, population and the, the observed uh, you know, galaxy clustering, we try to infer how galaxy occupy this dark matter halo. And this, this thing can be predicted by galaxy formation models, which is, you know, galaxy formation, well, there's no, no perfect theory about galaxy formation. I think it's involved a lot of gastrophysics, you know, like the gas cooling, all that uh, star formation feedback. But the, any model can predict this, this thing and the, and the, from observation we can also infer this thing and the, we can compare the the inferred HOD and the, the predicted HOD and the test the galaxy formation model and this is very informative test you know rather than okay given galaxy formation model I can predict how galaxy clustered but you can, you don't know what's really go, going on if there is difference but if you put it in, in terms of the halo occupation distribution you have a much clear idea you know whether the the galaxy form, formation model give uh, give you a correct answer or not, or which part of the get from formation model does not match the uh, the observation. So okay, so uh, to summarize, okay, based on <laughs> we have the observation of galaxy clustering, we have the known properties dark matter halos, and then we try to combine these two to infer how galaxy occupy dark matter halos. That's that's basically the idea of this HOD modeling. So. And uh, I, sh I should emphasize that uh, there, uh, there seem to be a lot of uh, misunderstanding of this halo occupation distribution. I need to emphasize that uh, the HOD is not, uh, not a galaxy, galaxy formation model. It's just a tool to empirically infer the relation between galaxy and dark matter halos. So uh, you can say, okay, it's kind of a weakness. It's kind of a weakness for the HOD. It thinks there's no galaxy formation physics in it. But on the other hand, this is the, the strength of the, the mod, this HOD uh, framework. Since there's no galaxy formation physics involved, we can infer something really robust. You no, know? there's no, just based on the, uh, the everything that we know. And this can test, can, can be used to test against the galaxy formation theory. Okay, so I think uh, I can borrow some words from the famous American philosopher, Donald, no, Rumsfeld, so I, I, I can say the HOD modeling is just uh, to make use of known knowns to probe known unknowns and uh, to reveal unknown unknowns. So the known knowns is just, okay, the observation and uh, everything we know about the uh, dark matter halo you know, uh, properties. And this known unknowns is just the relation between the galaxy and dark matter halos, which is important in galaxy formation uh, process. And the unknown unknowns, 
for you know, some unexpected trend in the galaxy formation in the halo relationship between halos and the galaxies. So uh, thanks to mm, Donald Rumsfeld, I think that's, uh, I think I, I can summarize the HOD like this. Okay, so, okay, uh, in the work I will present, I will mainly try to model the two-point collision function of galaxies. So the two-point collision function of galaxies basically the excess probability with respect to a random distribution of finding galaxy pairs at a, a given separation. So it's basically the pair count. So, uh, so in, in, uh, within the framework of this HOD, so basically this, the pair count can be separated into two parts. Uh, so at the small scales, the pairs, basically the two galaxies of each pair uh, come from, uh, from the same dark matter halo. So we call it the, the, the one halo term, that's the uh, one halo term. And uh, on large scales, so two, two galaxies of each pair come from different halos. So this is called uh, the two halo term. So basically that's, uh, uh, you can separate uh, the two point college function in this, uh, in these two terms. So the HOD modeling just uh, try to convert this pair count to a relation between galaxy and dark matter halos. Here I phrase it, uh, phrase it in terms of the mean occupation function of galaxies. It's just uh, uh, how, m how many galaxies you can find in, in a halo of a given, given mass. So, uh, so, so to, uh, uh, the, to do that, we need to uh, parameterize this, this, this uh, HOD. So this, the parameterization of this HOD is basically motivated by predictions of galaxy function models. So if I consider a sample of galaxies above a certain uh, threshold, so for example, luminosity threshold or stellar threshold. So basically, uh, I can divide the galaxy into a central galaxies and the satellite galaxies. Uh, so the mean occupation function of central galaxies is more like a step function. And so above a certain halo mass, there's always uh, one central galaxy uh, inside the halos. And the mean occupation function of satellite galaxies looks like a power law and with a scatter, it's more like a, a, a Poisson scatter. So there are several uh, k parameters in this parameterization. It's, it's like there are two mass scales. Uh, I mean, I call it uh, basically the characteristic uh, minimum mass of halos can host uh, this threshold, uh, uh, can host a galaxy at the threshold of luminosity. And the other one is uh, uh, the mass scale for satellite galaxies. Basically, I call it M1. So it's just where so just uh, the mass of halos that on average can host one satellite galaxy above the given threshold of luminosity. And also you can notice, okay, it, it may, may not be a, uh, a strict uh, step function since there are the transition width. This width uh, reflect the scatter between the galaxy luminosity and uh, the host mm -hmm. halo mass. Okay, that's the basic parameterization I, I, I use. So just to apply this to the deep two galaxy at uh, redshift one, and uh, uh, here I just show the modeling result. So you, uh, on the left uh, uh, panels, you can see the, the data points in red and the fit in, uh, in, in black curves. And I decompose the fit into one halo term and two halo terms. And on the, on, on the right, right hand side is the uh, inferred uh, uh, mean occupation function of galaxies. Yes? No, so it's a free, like a, you have like a free, you know, parallel index. And, and so, okay, so before I uh, go into details, let me just mention that, uh, so there is a general trend that uh, for galaxy clustering, you notice there is a small scale rise. And this small scale rise, you know, it becomes stronger as you go to higher luminosity and it becomes stronger as you go to higher redshift. So why is it so, so you know? Uh, left. So this is a, you can think that's a two-point collision function. This is a projected, a pro projected two-point uh, collision function. So, uh, okay, so, so let, let me just step, uh, step uh, to uh, some of the different topic here. So um, we know that uh, um, the, uh, the two-point collision function is not a strict power law and, and uh, th at certain scales you, you basically at about uh, like a a few H inverse megaparsec, there is a kind of transition. So basically the transition uh, from one halo term to two halo term. So, uh, and you have this small scale, uh, right, this small scale rest. Uh, the thing that uh, this small scale rest 
uh, become stronger for higher luminosity and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, higher redshift samples. And that higher redshift, I can show example, like uh, uh, by O.J. et al. For, for lemon brick galaxy in the Subaru uh, field uh, survey. So uh, <coughs> you can see, okay, there, the, the small scale rat is really strong. The, you can see this really strong upturn here at the uh, at scale. So here is basically, again, similar scale with, uh, at, at about uh, uh, the transition between one helo term and two helo term. The question is why you know, the, there is such a trend. So uh, recently we found that uh, in fact, uh, we can consider the, the, the two-point collision function in uh, quite uh, you know, a new uh, view uh, of this two-point collision function. So basically, I for, for any galaxy samples, I can decompose of the, the two-point collision function into three uh, basic uh, components. So it's uh, basically at, at small scale, so it, you have like a, the central galaxy paired with satellite galaxy in the same halo. And at uh, intermediate scales, you have satellite uh, paired with satellite inside the halo. And on large scales, you have, you know, basically you, you, you just get uh, 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 the, the shape is more like the, the, the matter uh, coordination function. And I guess, so you, the difference, th these uh, three bases mm -hmm. and components are the same for almost all the samples, uh, the luminous threshold samples. The difference for the diff different samples is just the difference in the coefficients. So the, the, the general trend for the coefficient is like, okay, when you increase the, the mass scale, the, uh, the halo mass scale of the sample, so basically the, the, the first coefficient will uh, increase uh, uh, rapidly, you know, uh, since it scales with uh, the, the mass M1, increases the mass scale. And the second, tr second uh, coefficient just uh, you know, stays almost a constant, does not change too much. And the third one is changed slowly. So you can think that when you increase the halo mass scale, uh, this, this term increases a lot, this, ter this term increases a little bit, and this term remains almost constant. So you get a basically big uh, rise uh, at small scales. So on the new record, this from yeah. like principal value decomposition or something, you had a bunch of variables in there. Are you, how did you come up with the separation these bases? On? So the separation based on basically the nature of the, uh, the, 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 the pairs whether it's a central galaxy paired with satellite. So this will dominate on small scales. So, uh, it's satellite so you took this from the data, or what's happening? No, to that's, that's uh, from the theoretical point of view. Yeah, yeah, theoretical <coughs> point of view. Yeah, so I, I can show you a movie, basically, so you can see. So here, I just increase the mass scales. You know, that's the mean calculation function. So that thinks the mass scales, how the three components change. Mm -hmm. so, so here, the collective uh, view of this. So, so basically, you see that the red one is, uh, is this component. And uh, the, the the blue one is the second component. The the green one is the, this component. So when you increase the mass scale, what changes that the, the relative uh, uh, superposition coefficient change. So the, for the first one, it increase a lot, and the, the third one increase a little bit. But the, the second one does not change too much. Uh, yeah, yeah, this, this, yeah, this M1 is a, is, you can think that's uh, basically the mass scale, so you can think it's the previous M1, yeah. those from the, from the HOD. Yeah, so, so, okay, so here, just, uh, just, uh, I, I, I have a general idea about how the HOD scale with the luminosity, then, then I know, yeah, so, 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 so you can, you can try to understand this general feature like this. Okay, let, let me get back to the, to the main topic. Okay, okay so. Okay, so that's, uh, uh, we have modern result for deep two galaxy, and uh, we also have modern result for Sloan galaxy at redshift uh, zero, basically. Just again, this picture. So the model comes by putting the central galaxy at the center of the halo, the satellite mm. proportion of the dark matter density? No, no, no. The so satellite, uh, so uh, you, have this, uh, you have this functional form, right? I have power law. So the, the power law, the slope of the power law is, is a free parameter. But is, that, is that where to put it? What, what, what spatial, what spatial spatial oh, spatial, okay, so yeah, here I assume that uh, it follows the dark matter, you know, the, the, the MFW profile. Yeah, so, but, but you can, in principle, you can make the like, concentration parameter to be different than, than, than MFW. But here... Let's come from the simulation of what the position of the halos come from some simulated point. Here, here just assume they follow MFW. I assume the universal MFW and you, you put non- 
Maybe that's all. No. Uh, yeah, how do you do the large scale collecting? Large scale collecting. Yeah. Large -scale collecting. Okay, so. Well. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, do it analytically. Same things. I uh, use like, uh, yeah, in principle, you can think it's like, a like more like a populated simulations. But uh, here I use analytical, you know, uh, analytical method since all these calculations are, are, are tested against the simulations and the populated uh, mock uh, galaxy catalogs. And uh, the accuracy is like uh, much better than 10%. Uh, so, so, but uh, there are more details in the modeling. The thing that uh, you need to care about a lot of different things. For example, the skill, skill dependence of the bias factor, and the, the, the halo halo excluding effect, all this has been taken into account in the modeling. So that it's, a, it's kind of, you can think it's calibrated with, against the simulation and it's really uh, got a really good agreement with simulation. So it sounds a little bit like there's a lot of adjustable parameters. No, no. Okay, so, so for, for this one particular one, I only have five, five parameters. That's this. For the halos, you don't have previous parameters. That halo, halos, you know, that just from like a simulations, you can think, oh, I just popped the simulation. It's just with how, get with the HOD, pre, uh, HOD, you know, uh, I, I, how, how I parameterize the HOD, you know, the HOD right, will so have five parameters. To, to fit those, basically, one function. Yeah. But uh, th 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 that's more than like uh, one data point, right? Well, it's more than one data point, but five yeah. parameters to do one functional fit is... Yeah. But uh, the thing that in, prin the, the, the in principle, I, you, if I have other like uh, uh, statistics in like a uh, uh, three point or other, you know, the the distortion, things like that, I can still use this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, separate parameters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can see whether the physical No, you can make uh, predictions based on that. And uh, for other statistics and uh, or you can use other statistics to improve your uh, your constraint. And so you get uh, so with these five adjustable parameters you get constraints on what they have to be. Yeah, right. And, and so you've got some Right. So the the thing that you get a pretty good constraints on for example on the on the math scale, so you know, like uh, the, uh, the 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 threshold, the galaxy with threshold, galaxy. yeah, central galaxy, or the 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 math scales for such a galaxy, you get pretty good constraint on that. And the model assumes uh, no stochasticity, presumably, right? So the post correlations are just the, the employees basically is just the, the square root of the other correlations. Uh, on large scales. On uh, yeah. On well. any scale, I mean, in the model you have to take a value. Right, no. So on small scales, you, you, you just populate halos. You can think, right? Uh, you can think, okay, you, you have a simulation, you have halos, you identify halos in a simulation, right? And uh, so with the recipe here, just populate uh, galaxy inside, inside the halos. All other things are taken into account of the simulation. That's, uh, you know, how, how you put the galaxy in, inside the halos. That's the only thing. I see. And, and the cross correlations are, are not measured and not compared. Uh, cross correlation with matter, you mean? Well, I mean, yeah. in no, in between, between, no, 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 no. Uh, here only auto correlation I consider, but no, yeah, I did not consider. Right. So there are many more cross correlations than there are auto correlations, so there's a lot of information in principle. Uh, yeah, that's correct. But uh, if you think in a way like population simulations, right? So there's no, uh, uh, you just uh, know how galaxy a uh, function of different luminosity occupied like my halos. Then the auto correlation you, you, you get it automatically, right? You don't. You, you could test and, and better constrain your model if you had measurements. Yeah, correct. Yeah, right. That's that's correct. You basically you know how uh, how uh, you know the difference. Different. You may know the difference of the different populations of how how they occupy halos. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah you have better. And uh, you have consistency checking. Right now, you've got a lot of parameters, and as normal saying, you know, you, you can always get a line with high parameters. Uh, that's, that's not true. Okay. But um, if you then from that, you can predict what all your off-diagonal terms will be, and you can check whether this fit actually is that satisfies yeah, yeah, yeah. the assumption. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Right. That's true. So I, I can mention that uh, for the Sloan galaxy, we did that, uh, you know, for example, we separate into blue galaxy and red galaxy, and also we have like uh, uh, auto correlations and the cross correlation between them. So uh, I can fit the data <coughs> with just a five parameter. It, uh, in the way it's like a 30 something data points. So it's mm -hmm. uh, okay, let, let, let's uh, look into some details about the, the modeling result. So here's the distribution of central galaxy luminosity. So that's the uh, mean central galaxy luminosity as a function of halo mass uh, for deep two and the strong galaxy. So, so at uh, low mass, you there's a st steep rise, and the higher mass, basically, this relation got. Uh, 
flat chain. And also, uh, also uh, so uh, that's the mean, uh, mean central galaxy uh, luminosity. And also you have scatter of central galaxy luminosity inside halo. So that's a, that's basically a scatter in luminosity of galaxy as a function of halo mass. So you see there, also the error bar is pretty large, but there, there is a weak trend that uh, at the low mass, in low mass halos, the scatter in galaxy luminosity you know, becomes larger. So this may be an indication that uh, in this, in this low mass uh, galaxies, in the, the star formation, the distribution of star formation in the major star formation epoch may be, you know, pretty broad. That may be. So can I just ask you a really simple question? Yeah. What, what is the mass that you're plotting there? Uh, the the, that's the halo mass. So it's basically the, 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 the halo he here is defined as the, the, two, uh, the mean density of the halo is a 200, the mean density of the, the background, the universe. That's, that's how I define the halo. So, so, so you can think it's more like a visual, visual, yeah. And you find some cluster using some cluster finding. Right, right. You so can you go find the central galaxy. Uh -huh. You go out to 200 times, well, you go out to some radius in which right. you have a, you count up all the mass how. Uh, right, so it cut, uh, the, the, the mass is like uh, where you reach the radius, where the, 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 the mean density of this whole thing is about 200. So how do you know what the mean density of the whole thing is? Well, from, no, that's a, uh, Okay, observationally that's, that's hard. For example, you can use, use lensing or whatever. But, well, but, but that's what you're plotting, I thought. Yeah, but, but, but th these are from uh, no knowledge of the dark matter halos. The thing that you, you assume a cosmology and uh, you know everything about dark matter halos. But those are you calling those are data points. Uh, the, this comes out of the from the, the modeling. Function as a function of the yeah, the, the, the just the f you know, from the clustering, model the clustering, you, you yeah. know the hot dark matter. So you're dark not measuring mass, mass at all? You're no, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm not uh, directly yes, measuring yes, the mass. Right. The the well, but I'm but I'm confused by the fact that there are data points on there as well as dotted lines. There will look like data. No, 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 not data. Okay, that, okay, let, uh, that, that's my bad. So, okay, that's the modern result. The the, the data points. That's the modern result, and the curves is just uh, some function of um, fit from other work. So, yeah. You transform, I would really like it, yeah, transform. Like yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so really it makes more sense to plot this versus correlation. <coughs> correlation. Mm. No, the thing yeah, that, uh, that uh, the thought. yeah, so that's, that's basically, you know, derived from here. So that, that's here. So from here you go, you, you go to ah, this place, right? Fine. Here you get to the, the mass and the luminosity relation. Right. Yeah. And that's some theoretical mass. Yeah, theoretical. So the thing that uh, basically what you, what you need is that uh, extract information from the clustering and the dark matter distribution. You, you extract this, this, this kind of information. Yeah. So, Jen, why yeah. are the points so much correlated for the scatter? Uh, it's, it's this one? It's not correlated, it's just error by its large. The thing that it's really hard to, to constrain. Okay, you can see this from the previous plot. So, you can see uh, basically here why it has the kind of this kind of strange shape. It just okay. You can fit the data, uh, the data use a, a very steep step function or very shallow you know, step function. So you can get equally well fit because, so basically what constraint here is like, uh, okay, the large scale bias of the, uh, of the halo on this mass scale does not change too much. Basically it becomes flat. So you, if okay, you change so like this, not so not, yeah, not very sensitive to, to, to this, but you get some, the, the error bar is pretty large, so you cannot uh, really infer very robust uh, you know, uh, things here. Okay, so let I can also put the result in terms of the mass scales of host uh, uh, halos as function of galaxy luminosity. So you can see that's a, uh, that's a uh, halo mass for central galaxy. So basically the, 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 the characteristic minimum halo mass to, s to host uh, uh, a central galaxy at, at the given luminosity, and, uh, and, and 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 this M1 is the, the mass scale for satellite galaxy, and so ma basically the mass scale of halos that on average can host uh, one satellite galaxy above the lumin luminosity threshold. So all galaxies blue and red, or, or is it that's uh, that's basically all galaxies in the survey. Yeah, there's oh, no. Within the survey, within the survey. Yeah, yeah, within the survey. And yeah. so D2 is like sort of blue galaxies. 
Yeah, it's blues like that. There is, yeah, but uh, up to third, so it's a uh, uh, complete up to certain certain magnitude. But uh, I, I I will mention I will address this later. So so you can see there's kind of a scaling relation. For example, the 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 dotted dotted curve here is just uh, like a uh, uh, eighteen times the uh, eighteen times the uh, the solid curve here. So you can see pretty a pretty good uh, scaling relation between these two mass scales. And uh, this does not seem to involve much uh, at the ratio to uh, y. Just uh, the factor is like more like sixteen. So that means you know to if you have uh, defined a galaxy above a certain luminous threshold, okay, you know the minimum halo mass that can host such galaxy. And if you want, if <coughs> if you want to have a satellite galaxy besides central galaxy, you need to increase the halo mass by a factor of uh, twenty or fifteen, not by a factor of two. This so is with some minimum. Yeah, right, correct. For example, here, just uh, for, for all galaxies above our star, I know, yeah, okay, yeah. what's the host, host halo mass for central galaxy, I know, I know the host halo mass for, for satellite galaxy. Yeah, so what, what did you use for the satellite luminosity? Uh, what, what did I use? Yeah. So that, that's, uh, for example, here, I just show, okay, for satellite, for satellite galaxy above our star, right? For, 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 for satellite above our star, luminosity is luminosity above, above our star. I know that typically you need to go to like uh, halos about uh, a few times 10 to the 13 solar mass halos. So, so, so that you can that find that the one satellite inside. That's for any central, so that's averaging over all central galaxy masses up to our star. No, 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 that's not a central. That's just the luminosity of a galaxy, whether it's central or satellite, right? So I just say, okay, if you want to ask me, okay, what's the typical mass for a central galaxy with you know, luminosity out of star? Then I said, okay, that's typical mass of a few times 10 to the 12 solar mass. That's basically the Milky Way light. Hello, right? And and if you want, want to ask, okay, if I have a set, if I for satellite above uh, our star, okay, what kind of a typical halo mass that uh, on average I can find one satellite in that in that halos? I tell you, okay, so this curve that's okay, you need to go like a few times ten to thirteen solar mass halos to find. The point is that the central galaxy has to be brighter than the satellite. That's, that's part of the model. Yes. Uh, no. Well, uh, not exactly true, but uh, yeah, somehow like this. So. So I'm just curious about in our case, right, Andromeda and we are both L star. Yeah, but uh, that's kind of not uh, one big halo. Right? Under the definition, of the, the halo definition here is like uh, the, the Milky Way has its own halo, right? And uh, the, the, the uh, Andromeda has its own halo. And so and what, how does that come from the definition? So the definition of the halo here in this language. So you center it on the Milky Way and you go out to, to uh, 200, times yeah, the density, right. Right, right, right. That doesn't encompass. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so. So what is the right balance? Uh, okay, so just uh, okay, put uh, you know the the luminosity you know whether it's in in terms of our star or in terms of the absolute value. Okay, you can also infer like uh, the satellite fraction as a function of luminosity uh, at, uh, at these two redshift. So for example, so. Uh, the satellite fraction is decreasing with the luminosity. That means that uh, for uh, a, a galaxy, a more luminous galaxy tends to be a central galaxy and residing in lower mass halos uh, than satellite galaxy in high, higher mass halos. So you can, uh, you can consider uh, all this. And so far, okay, all these results, you know, get this result at a two redshift, right? So there's so your comparison of this HOD, that HOD just more like uh, two snapshots at the ratio with one and the ratio with zero. And how can we establish an evolutional link between these two galaxy populations? That's, that's uh, the... I think you said that before, but if, if, are the Sloan's selected by the same color cuts as the, um, the D2? Uh, no, that's really hard. So the, the, the thing that, okay, they are not... Uh, uh, so, so the Sloan, in fact, is selected in R band. And uh, uh, and uh, for the deep two, it's in fact in red frame B band. Well, why does so B, when you can just do the cut after the fact and select the slow and D, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, for for real, you know, galaxy survey, that's really hard to do. You know, so I can that's 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 the data uh, available. It's it's really it will be much much better you know, to to model it and to understand everything. You know, in terms of if you if you see like galaxy samples at different redshift in the same red frame band. But that's not the case in reality. Yes. Do you recall what's the definition of the satellite uh, in this context? Okay, so you have, for example, in, in terms, 
you have a cluster, right? There's a central like C a CD galaxy. That's the central galaxy. Mm -hmm. Other ga all other galaxies are so considered. Point. Yeah. So uh, other yes. So yeah. Right. Yeah, that means that if you have, you have very, you know, you want to, okay, if you randomly so choose the, just no, that's for all the population. Just okay, you can think in this way, just like, okay, if, if you define, for example, I want to choose like a 10 hour star galaxy randomly from the sky. Okay, you have like a 10% chance to, to get it in, as a satellite. <coughs> Okay, so how do we establish a, a, a evolutional link between the two populations of galaxies, the two redshift? So again, we, we should use the, what we know about the, the dark matter halos. So we know dark matter halos, you know, involve uh, you have, have you you have a, a bunch of dark matter halos as redshift one, they merge and then they, they they grow to a larger you know dark matter halos. So we can we can uh, on average we can know okay. For halo at ratio zero, what's, is, what's the matter with progenitor halo at ratio one? We can establish such a relation. So, so here, okay, so here is just a, such a relation, you know, established. So, so that's uh, the mass of halos at ratio zero, and that's, that's the mass of the progenitor halos at ratio one. That's, that's the mean relation here. And uh, at, at each redshift, we know how the central galaxy luminosity scales with, uh, with halo mass, right? So. So as ratio to one from Sloan galaxy, we know the luminosity as a function of halo mass, and the ratio to one, we know from the deep two galaxy how luminosity scale with halo mass. And, the f and then we can establish a, a link between the, the galaxy populations, evolution link basically, statistically from ratio to one to ratio zero. So, so just the, I, I show here just the, 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 the connection between luminosity of the galaxy at ratio to one and the ratio zero. So for example, for for our star galaxy at ratio zero, so uh, its progenitor central galaxy is more like to have a B band magnitude minus twenty. Okay, so so we, we establish a link, but however, because again the the, the service are in different band, it's really hard to to get more use, something more useful for, more useful from this. It would be better that we have galaxies you know uh, service that's in the same rest frame band then. But, but even this, we need to consider it like past evolution and luminosity to, to, to get a, a fair comparison between them. But however, if you think of the, all this in terms of stellar mass, think, things will become easier. So what you can do is like, okay, if, if I address with one, I know how stellar mass occupy dark matter halos. And uh, I can, you know, if I assume there's no star formation going on, only all these halos merge, and uh, basically like, I can follow all the, the halo uh, merge uh, up and uh, up to ratio of the zero. And, uh, and uh, I will know how the stellar mass occupy dark matter halos at ratio of the zero. But in, uh, so basically I can predict these things from the, uh, the, the ratio of the one, then. yeah. And so you're assuming though that the HOD depends only upon the halo mass, right? Right, the environment right. environment doesn't matter, right. right? I mean, like in reality, that, that shouldn't be the case. Well, well so you are talking about the, the assembly, assembly bias? The Yeah, well, uh, let, let me finish. This, this environment, uh, yeah, so here I did not consider this, this complicated thing. The data is not uh, at this level for me to consider this sophisticated model. But uh, I, I tell you in the future, you know, work. So this can be automatically taken into account. If you, if you really like, okay, at the ratio to one, you, 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 you know how galaxy occupy dark matter halos and you involve it. This, all this, in the simulation, you can take all this environmental dependence into account. The thing that, uh, you're talking about this assembly bias thing, right? Also, right? Yeah, I, Plus I can talk. Yeah. Also on the well, the this may not be true. In fact, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to certain to certain degree, I, I agree with you. But uh, like the, all these current data shows that uh, okay, all these effects are not really big. I, I can talk. About it. 
Okay, so that's uh, okay. So I have an observation at the ratio to one. I got a prediction for a zero, assuming no star formation. So, but in reality, there are star formation uh, go, uh, going on du during ratio to one, ratio to zero, right? So, so, uh, so in fact, uh, you know, there are new stars form, you know, and enter the halo. So, f but for this, I can infer from data at the ratio to zero. So, this I predict from ratio to one you know, observations, so assuming no star formation. Then, what? Well, the difference of these two, this predicted one, assuming no star formation, and the inferred one from the data, give me idea. You know, uh, the how much, uh, how many, uh, the, the amount of stars formed during ratio one to ratio zero, right? This is the quantity we want. Do you also allow for destruction of galaxies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so, okay, this is just the uh, the general idea, but I will show some result. Okay, so. So okay, so uh, since uh, it, it, so in terms of this stellar mass, it's better to have stellar mass based samples. But uh, but here we are limited by the by the data. So but I just did a uh, rough estimation of stellar mass, you know, based on the color and the luminosity. So convert the color luminosity uh, to stellar mass. And uh, here again, I show I show this, uh, you know, uh, evolution link based on the stellar mass. So just uh, from previous plot. You can you can see okay I have a stellar mass of galaxy at function of halo mass at redshift zero and stellar mass uh, at the function of halo mass at redshift one. I establish a link between the the stellar mass in the progenitor halo halos of a central galaxy at redshift one and uh, the stellar mass at uh, of the central galaxy at redshift zero. So we can see it is more clear if I put it in this way. So here the the present day halo mass. And uh, as a function of halo mass, you know, I know the mean stellar mass inside the halos. That's the, the, the top curve. And the, this curve just tell me, okay, for, for this halo, what can, uh, the amount of stellar mass inside its progenitor halos at redshift to one. Okay, that's this lower curve. And uh, the ratio of the two just tell me, okay, as a function of pres present day halo mass, uh, the fraction of stars in the central galaxy has been in place at the ratio to one. Okay, that's clear. So, okay, so for example, here, okay, in the present day, like, uh, uh, in halos of like a five times ten to twelve solar masses. So, I know at the rest for for this cent for central galaxy in these halos, I know at back to ratio to one, its progenitor ga uh, central galaxy has only like a. Thirty or uh, one third of the stars in place at the ratio of one. So we need to it, 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 this galaxy needs to like uh, get uh, the other like uh, two two thirds of stars. So, so if one had today had two ends of the halo of one, each of which had a central galaxy, you count that? Do you sum those two or just take one of them? Or one okay, you, you so you pick the the, the most massive progenitor. But at then the, that's the stars that merge, that the galaxy actually also merge. Yeah. You don't count the stars that came into the merge. That's right? correct. You're absolutely correct. Okay, that's the that's question. Okay, here are only one third of stars in place in the progenitor central galaxy. How did I get uh, all this stellar mass uh, so that I get, get uh, you know, this 100% at the ratio zero? Okay, so that's, that's, that's we will answer your question. So I put it here. So, okay, so you have ratio one, you have the, the, the progenitor central galaxy and this Central galaxy, the, 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 the star is still here, the ratio zero, that's basically only account for like 30% of the total stellar mass of the central galaxy. Uh, so what's the contribution from other, uh, uh, other sources? So you can have like a central galaxy in other halos merged to, this, to, to the halo and this halo merged to the center and they contribute to, to, the, to the stellar mass of the ratio of the zero central galaxy. So and you can also have the satellite, this, this kind of gas merge and uh, uh, merge to the cen center to, to contribute to a stellar mass. But uh, after you take into account these sources, you're still left uh, you know, with like, a, uh, you, you still cannot reach 100%. So what's left is just the, the star formation contribution. So, so from here you can see, okay, in, in low mass halos, like uh, you need like 70% of stars to form during ratio of the one to ratio of zero. But for high mass halos, you maybe like only 20% of them should form during ratio of the one, ratio of zero. And you see the fixed mass for like for all the stars between 
using valence one using a solar spectrum to make a conversion? Uh, uh, Similar what? Well, if you measure luminosities at electric zero and electric one, you're talking about masses here. So to yeah. get to the stellar mass, you need a mass tonight. Yeah, because yeah, you're dead. Yeah, you're dead. Yeah. Mass, yeah. yeah, so I convert uh, yeah, I guess, color, yeah, color the and the luminosity, I get, uh, I, get, uh, I get the stellar mass. So, uh, stellar mass is using a, 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 a gamma, or a, a index of three, or the, what number do you use for mass and light to get the conversion? No, 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 you don't need to come. So, you, you have luminosity, right? Yes. You have color. These two will give you stellar mass. The That's the, the, the barrier so relation. Right, yeah. But here, only one color. So, 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 so barrier yeah. have this kind of relation. Yeah. So but this formula of the monotonous plus color to give you a stellar mass? I mean, how do you just want to The 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 bell we talk, bell B L L. Yeah. Bell formula. And what what number do you what what number does it come out to? So I'm just wondering. You have this is mass light of five one. What kind of mass? Uh. So, so the, 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 the mass to light ratio is a function of color. That's where, how you get the stellar mass. Yeah, but you must know, generally speaking, yeah, what's the like number? If you look at M or L, P, or the 100, or what's, what's yeah. the uh, value you know what's Okay, I, I, I don't remember this. But, so but it depends on the color. It's different galaxies, though, right? For three minutes, it was only this. Well, it's blue to a certain point, not to. Uh, not, uh, and it assumes blue. that this relation that did not evolve with redshift in order to get this conversion. Uh, okay, okay, I should say that. Okay, for. For for Sloan galaxy, I use this conversion, but for deep two galaxy, it's like more com complicated. They, they use a formula calibrated with like uh, the uh, uh, in different band, use different band uh, and uh, colors in different band, and also calibrated with like a spec the galaxy. You know, you have spectra in the K band, I think like this. So it's more complicated, but uh, we do assume like same initial mass function, so that will get the ratio. The ratio. Basically, does not care about the initial. Same I and same age. Right. No, no, no. The they know about the age and the color. Sure. Yeah. Do you, yeah. you have a stellar mass and a gamma mass? Uh, no, no. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how that. I didn't, I didn't see it. That's why I was wondering about how I got these masses. Let me ask mm -hmm. another question, though. Yeah. So I'm a little. So for a halo, you go up to 12 to 13 here. Or 10 to 13. Yeah, right? yeah almost 10 to 13. Yeah. That's the mass range I can prove with these two, two okay. galaxy samples. So, so what you're telling me is that so there's a giant, there's a sentinel galaxy. In, the, a lot. in these clusters. Yeah. And you're saying that from Reshef 1 to the present, there was only yeah. a star formation in the central galaxy yeah. and the halo as a whole. Uh, so for all these for, for all these things, you know, I don't gather in the satellite, in this central, so all these star formation. Yeah, yeah, so but at the end, you're looking at that just the central galaxy, yeah, saying right. that's the total mass. So right. you're saying 20% of it or something right, like right, came right. from star formation. Right, right. So there was a big merger from between Z equals 1 and now, and that merger only produced Twenty percent more stars in that CD galaxy. R right, right. So you do not, and even th so, the thing that there's kind of if there's kind of selection effect for s for the for the deep two galaxy. If you count this, there's some uncertainty on this like uh, the fraction. So this fraction may drop to like even like five percent or ten percent. Okay. So. so basically, it doubles the mass almost just because of the merger because they're not so different in masses. On average. Right, not not due to star formation. Yeah, yeah more no, exactly. Merger, just right. from the merger right. of the. the uh, that one right there. Yeah, right yeah, this and this, yeah. yeah. That's yeah okay, fine. okay, that, but th that's really like, uh, it's not a very sophisticated model because, you know, uh, here just do some really rough estimation and, uh, but uh, in the future, I think we have, have like more. So basically, you call it a dry merger, right? Yeah, okay, th yeah, yeah, you call it, okay, this is, this two more, more like a dry, dry, merger. dry merger. Yeah, that's dry merger, but, but uh, this is stuff. Yeah, okay, so the, 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 the you have a question? Okay, so that's a, that, yeah, that's 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 uh, that's a estimation. Since basically, uh, from the modeling, I know how galaxies oc occupy different uh, halo masses. So just uh, you know, you, you know how so how satellites how satellites uh, occupy. I also know the number of satellites. So just uh, do a rough estimation. So this is based on the fraction of satellites at which one. No, it's satellite at the ratio to one, but not satellite at the ratio yeah. zero. Yeah. Yeah, uh, some some fraction of this that has fallen. Not uh, not a lot. Not necessarily all of them. Uh, 
then, yeah, then friction argument and also this kind of luminosity gap of the argument. But I, I can't talk to you in detail. So, but I mean, the point is, I think that's an adjustable parameter, right? If you, if you turn down, if you make dynamical okay, uh, sufficient, yeah, yeah, you yeah. get less from merging all these little guys. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, so here, I did not uh, include uh, such kind of sophisticated modeling. That's, that's the kind of uh, work uh, I want to do in the future with like a more, more, uh, pro, uh, more uh, much better data, you know, and, uh, but here it's just a rough estimation. But I will show you that uh, the result here is just, okay, the conclusion here, like uh, for, for luminous halos, about 70% of the stars should form after redshift one. And for central galaxy in the halos, about, uh, about like 10 to the 13th element halos, about 25 of their stars form after redshift. The thing that, okay, you can compare the result with a totally different, uh, uh, result from totally different methods. Uh, for example, uh, if I consider the global star formation history, so people can, can derive this from a, a, lot, a, lo a lot of different uh, techniques. So, so if I use the father to fit to this, I get like about 40 to 50% of stars form after redshift one no, globally. So this is, so all numbers are basically bracket, uh, bracket uh, the number here. And also, uh, Pantera to basically use the uh, uh, star formation, uh, st stellar population modeling of redshift one, it's long galaxy. So you, you infer, try to infer the star formation uh, per galaxy. So you just use uh, the spectral galaxy, you do a stellar population modeling, you have a set of star formation and uh, different ages, and uh, you, you try to infer uh, star formation uh, history of galaxies uh, at, uh, you know, at uh, uh, one to one base, basis. So they, they infer like uh, you know sixty percent of the stars form between redshift uh, 0.8 and redshift zero for galaxy with stellar mass uh, like a, ten, uh, a few times ten to ten uh, stellar mass and twenty five percent of this form uh, for higher stellar mass. If you if you roughly convert this stellar mass to halo mass, that's basically in good agreement with our estimation here. And you can have other you know tests. I should I should mention so these are totally different methods. Uh, so here, you know, there's nothing related to the clustering, just based on the star population uh, uh, synthesis here. Um, okay, you have time. Okay, so so let me just briefly mention some other results from the uh, NOAO uh, wet. Uh, I think I can. Okay, uh, let me uh, just briefly mention this. So from the modern results, you can also infer the star formation efficiency versus halo mass. Uh, so, so basically, star formation efficiency is defined as uh, the fraction of a baryon that are associated with halos that has been converted to stars at this given uh, epoch. You can see at the redshift uh, uh, 1, you know, it's peaked at uh, about uh, 10 to 12 solar mass. At redshift 0, it's peaked a little bit lower. It's kind of, you can see this kind of down, the so-called downsizing uh, pattern here. Okay, I let, 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 let I think I don't have much time left. Let me talk about the, the evolution of luminous red, red satellite galaxies from NOL uh, Deep Wide Field Service. So the idea is simple. So, so from this service, <coughs> we have like a galaxy, we can measure the galaxy clustering at redshift uh, you know, uh, 0.9 and to redshift 0.3. Uh, so the thing that from the, the the, this high redshift data, you know, we can fit the data and infer how galaxy occupied its halos. And uh, then we can populate the, the simulation. And the f uh, for example, we can define some dark matter particles as, ga uh, as uh, galaxy particles according to the HOD we infer. And follow their evolution, assuming there's no merger happen. And then we can go to a lower redshift. For example, go to redshift 0.5. And then we can predict the clustering signal for these galaxies. So that that prediction is the dotted uh, the, the dashed line, and the it is is higher than what you measure from the data from the, the the real data. So and from the real real data at the lower redshift, you can also infer how galaxy occupy dark, dark matter halos. You can compare this kind of the so-called passively involved HOD, and the, the HOD will infer from the data, and you will find that uh, for in this high mass halos, you need like one third of this satellite to disappear. During, re during this redshift interval from 0.9 to 0.5. So, so where, does the, where, where do these satellites go? So there are 
there, they can contribute to a central galaxy growth, but we have some limit on this. It's not, uh, not uh, uh, you cannot contribute uh, too, too, too much. And uh, the other contribution is that uh, this, they can contribute to the intra cluster light. So they just uh, you know, move in that halo and uh, get strapped and, uh, and they lost the stars in, and in this uh, intra uh, cluster light. And, and the other thing that they, they can just uh, got strapped uh, so that they lost enough of stars so that uh, they, they leave our sample. That's a possibility. Of this. But we, we can see that uh, you know, we need like one third of the satellite to in massive halos to disappear. And uh, so, so for this, for this uh, NLO deep wide field service, you know, we are still uh, undergoing the HOD modeling of this. Uh, that shows maybe one interesting result of this. So, so we have data uh, for different redshift slices, uh, basically from redshift uh, one to redshift zero for this, this red galaxy. So here I show for this red galaxy, uh, the, the, the mass scales for central galaxy and satellite galaxy as a function of uh, uh, luminosity. If we take into account, so we take into account the path evolution of this luminosity, you know, by uh, by taking the redshift effect, uh, factor into account. So you can think the uh, the axis as a stellar mass. So the interesting thing is that uh, there are three inter uh, very interesting things to notice is that uh, at a different redshift, you can always get the same scaling relation between the, the two mass scales, one mass scale for central galaxy, one mass scale for satellite galaxy. And, uh, uh, and also, the another thing that you get, uh, you know, this relation, this like mass scale uh, as a function of stellar mass does not change, does not involve much with the redshift. That means whatever redshift uh, you talk about, given the halo mass, you know the stellar mass in stellar, central, uh, stellar mass of central galaxy. That that's kind of to me is kind of uh, really amazing, and uh, what that is, and also also there are something special happened at at uh, ten to twelve solar mass halo. So maybe you know here below that uh, it's hard to get a red galaxy, maybe red central galaxy. So this seems pretty interesting. And uh, what does this mean? I am not very sure. So why you know the 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 the, the mass of halos at a given red, any redshift? you will know the stellar mass. That seems quite uh, interesting. Does this mean that uh, you know, the, the, the mass of the halo is the, is the most important uh, parameter for galaxy formation? Wait, or uh, what? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, because you're finding that, like, was you finding that so the main scales linearly within stellar? Or uh, not, not linear. So for example, this, okay, so it's this different, yeah, yeah, di different uh, you know, colors for different oh, redshift. Right. All these uh, Basically, you know, they, they fall in the same relation. So that oh, means, sorry. okay, uh, you, you ask me, okay, for stellar mass, like, uh, for if I you want, you want to know, like, 10 to the 11 solar mass, you know, right. stellar mass, what's the halo mass? Right. I will tell you, okay, right, whether you are redshift one or redshift zero, you get the same halo mass. So, so. if you do what you're suggesting, if it is a parallel, it's not unity, what do you get? Uh, you mean for, for, for what, for, for so which? That, that relationship between M star and, and, and mean, mean, say. Yeah. Uh, M star and what? The what bottom axis, is? the x-axis is M star. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you mean here? Yeah. The, here, I think uh, maybe it's more. more so yeah. Right? So so here, so here, you more the right. slope here is more like uh, I think uh, three. -ish. Here, more like uh, maybe maybe uh, linear here. But uh, I'd like to discuss you, if you ha have any idea, you know, what kind of impl implication. Uh, I'd like to. Of that case, circular speed or something, it will not be a straight line, it will not be the same number anymore. Well, well yeah, so, yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah, that, that's interesting, but uh, this, this itself is very interesting, right? So, you, you know the halo mass, and you, you will know the stellar mass of the central galaxy, so that's, that's quite interesting, so I think that must the same have some. galaxies and black holes, right? So, you know, immediately get your attention. Well, okay, but uh, I'm not sure for, for, for black holes, you know, there's, I don't know whether, you know, it's still arguable whether there's an evolution, right, for I'm sticking my relation, you know, I don't know. Right? You mean what's the cause of it? Yeah, it's I mean. equal zero, yeah, this is true. Right? But, but uh, yeah, at high uh, day, you know, I don't know. That's what. true. Yeah. Um, okay, so l let me finish. So, so uh, let me first, uh, so HOD at ratio of one, ratio of zero, and I, I get this from modeling the two-point college function of deep two and the long <laughs> galaxies. And, uh, and establish evolutionary link through halo evolution. 
and uh, and uh, try to infer some uh, thing about the uh, stellar mass evolution from redshift one to redshift zero, and and and, and uh, talked about the red satellite galaxy in massive halos, and all this uh, will give a very useful constraint for galaxy formation models, and for the future uh, work. So, so here, let's uh, use classic measurement for galaxy as a function of luminosity. But it would be very useful to, to have a classic measurement for galaxy samples based on stellar mass. And, uh, and also, here, I just basically I use basically, you know, for deep two and uh, Sloan, basically, that's basically two redshift slices. I can only say, okay, uh, the, the amount of stars uh, formed that during this redshift uh, interval. But I cannot say, too much about okay when they form, you know, whether it's from like redshift point eight or redshift point three. I don't, I can I don't know, know this. But if I have more redshift slices, basically I can map out a continuous star formation history as a function of a halo mass. The star form, uh, no, the st stellar mass grows as a function of halo mass. So the stellar mass growth can be compo decomposed into like a merger contribution, star formation contribution. All this will be very interesting and will put a very so this empirically derived uh, result will be very useful to test uh, uh, galaxy formation models. And so, and uh, also here I just use very simple uh, modeling to establish the link, but uh, in the future you will include the more uh, dynamics in it and, uh, and uh, model the evolution of satellite galaxies and uh, the, 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 the dynamic evolution of satellite galaxies. We have more details on this. So okay, so I put this as the uh, last transparency. Yeah. Thank you. So okay, so uh, for s uh, I can say okay for the mass scale, it's not very sensitive because, in addition to the to the uh, two point college function, I also include the number density of the sample in in the in the uh, modeling. So the number density will give you a very strong constraint on the, for example, the cutoff mass. Uh, so the, the 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 minimal mass of the halos, kind of. and uh, and uh, for the. Uh, so if you change the the profile, it will change the basically the the slope of this this uh, uh, the satellite mean occupation function, you know, the power law slope a little bit. But uh, this this M M one parameter, the mass scales for satellite will be relatively robust. So I think the the whole result will not be very sensitive to the assumption of the the density profile, unless you have an extreme density profile. That, then that will. Uh, uh, well, extreme. Sensitive. I mean, we know that there are compact groups where neighbors really like, you know, galaxies really like sitting much closer to the uh, neighbors than you would take from an NFW profile. So that highly biases oh, you right. to happen nearby, which means that you have a group evolution, for example, that you need to have 13 zone of yeah, masses to get to the galaxy. It seems to be a highly non robust. No, 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 no. no the thing that, that okay. The, the, the two point college function and model is on scales much larger than 100 kiloparsec. But this scale you are talking about is more likely on much smaller scales. So it's not, uh, the, the, the data is not, uh, uh, is, is not probing this scale. So the model, so I can only say, okay, how galaxies are, uh, how galaxies are distributed you know, all, you know, for scales larger than this. So, so from the data itself, you can, I think uh, this is not very sensitive to what you assume, like uh, the, the small scale thing. Velocities in, in one of the parameters, actually, and if you start looking at parallel velocity on this, this 
Yeah, you mean the in general it's a redshift distortion thing. Uh, I think uh, uh, if I care about, the, for example, the, the, the velocity distribution of galaxies, yeah, I need to consider uh, consider this uh, velocity information. But uh, here, since I, I don't, I, I don't, uh, you know, uh, at least for the model here, I don't need the velocity information. Basically, I only use the two aspect of the HOD. Just uh, yeah, for higher orders, yeah. So this is the, for analytical modeling, it's, uh, it's really hard. But uh, you can think uh, you can model it, uh, you know, by populating uh, simulations. Okay. 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 okay.